Thank you for the kind introduction, Peter. Uh, as said, my name is Leo Schranzhofer. I'm project uh, coordinator of the project Tinker, and today's topic will be uh, about sensor package fabrication via additive manufacturing for the multi sector, which is quite the core of the Tinker project. Uh, before I go a little bit into the details of the project, let me first introduce to you who we are. So who is ProFactor? For those of you who are not familiar with, uh, we are a research institute uh, in Upper Austria, more precisely in Steyr. We are there since uh, 1995. Uh, we have also a small location in Vienna. Uh, we are about 75 employees and uh, roughly our turnover is about uh, roughly eight millions per year. So uh, we have different research profiles here. Um, we have a strong focus in industrial assistance, assistance system, meaning, for example, uh, robots, human interactions, collaborative systems, uh, therefore flexible robotics, simulation-based optimization, and so on and so forth are required. And the other uh, main research topic in-house, uh, where I'm personally also from, is the additive micro nanofabrication. Here we focus on nanomicrostructures and functional surfaces. Since today is about printed electronics, you will obviously hear more on the functional surfaces for myself. Uh, let me uh, go in deeper into this a little. Uh, what we call here the, uh, the nanostructuring, we focus on nano imprint lithography, uh, which is a structuring method of, on the nano level, also micro level, uh, focusing on large area and freeform substrates. Here, for example, on the top picture, you see our road to plate uh, prototype line uh, where we can uh, structure large area while the other part is additive inkjet printing, where we focus on multi-material printing, multi-layer printing, also combination with our robotics guys to print on freeform substrates in the, uh, for us, easiest way to do. When you think about the background I presented, we have robotics and we have the additive, so why not combining these two together uh, and work on the print resolution to also uh, Re, uh, break the boundaries regarding inkjet printing to go below the theoretical resolution with that. We have different solutions and applications for industry. As said, our focus here, we are, we are a small research institute. Uh, one can say we, uh, from a business model perspective, we are comparable to, for example, the Fraunhofer Gesellschaft or to UNIM Research in Austria. So we try to bring basic research to industry, uh, if I may sum, sum it up uh, very briefly. So what we provide linked to our processes, linked to our research is a set nanostructures and freeform substrates. We also provide some products and tools. Uh, the process itself about digital printing and cut substrates and so on and so forth, and also realize printed electronics via inkjet printing. Here I want also to give some examples of our uh, current research focuses inside these topics. So uh, as I said, we provide some machines here. We also focus uh, from time to time on uh, bioassays uh, and biosensing applications. From a digital 3D printing perspective, uh, we had a strong collaborative projects uh, in, in in the past and also ongoing. Uh, here you see, for example, a nice demonstrator which was fully printed. So it's a it's a lamp, fully printed, except for the LEDs, to be honest. But any sides that the PCB, the light board, was uh, printed uh, just by novel materials. There, as that freeform printing or printing on freeforms, we folk, uh, you see here also some examples of our. Uh, combination of robotics and inkjet printing. And quite recently, we also uh, investigate on 3D printing of implants, so bone implants, uh, where we started uh, quite recently 
some collaborative projects. Maybe may some words to how we deal with process development, and we see it like that that our process development runs full circle, meaning that we when we get a piece or, or when we get a request by either industry or one we want to transport something to industry, we consider first uh, pre-processing uh, because not every ink, not every material can be placed on uh, other substrates or other materials. So maybe uh, quite often surface modifications are required. Uh, of course, that there is the, pr the processing itself. So this is just a complete picture, but uh, considering 3D printing applications and 3D printed electronics applications, uh, we investigate on the printing process itself uh, with materials, with printers that are available. And of course, especially on uh, printed electronics, uh, dedicated drying, curing, and sintering, or if you sum it up, the post-processing is required and uh, on the first iteration it does not work uh, quite often so we run full circle and uh, do optimization and characterization. Here's just an, uh, a very big overview so to say uh, on what individual machines are there and this is uh, to be honest also not up to date because uh, quite often projects we install new things, we develop new things but to give you the idea about our, uh, our possibilities. So much to ourselves. Now let me introduce the Tinker project. It's an EC-funded project that started last year in October. So we are quite fresh uh, on, in the game, so to say, uh, regarding the project. Uh, sorry. And let me first... Uh, let me elaborate a little bit on our target application. Uh, since the title of the project is uh, linked to sensor packages and also my title to the presentation here, uh, sensor packages are especially crucial for self-driving cars, which is quite an emerging technology in recent years and becoming more and more important. Uh, Self-driving cars, uh, I don't know, uh, I am a kid of the 80s, so I remember, for example, Knight Rider, which was awesome uh, as a kid. So uh, self-driving cars uh, require, of course, some dedicated processing, uh, uh, strong, um, strong processing behind, strong computing behind, but of course also tracking the surrounding. And by tracking the surrounding, we are talking here about... Um, sensor packages that are part of the car. Modern or recent uh, newspaper articles or uh, uh, press releases always show, and if you just Google it, um, you find uh, quite often some, some demonstrators, some, um, uh, some nice cars driving by itself, but always there is a little bit of bulkiness behind. So think of, for example, this big uh, parts that are placed on the top of the car that uh, that's representing the lidar sensor that uh, target that tracks the surrounding. Uh, but if you want to go forward with that, you run into certain issues here. Here also a summary where such uh, sensors are placed in the car, and you see quite everywhere because you need to track the surrounding basically everywhere. Um, of course, there are individual uh, levels of self-driving cars and uh, the self-driving approach uh, and we are currently in the, uh, between two and three so hands of driving partially is possible think of uh, the self parking cars you just uh, can uh, put your hands off the wheel and uh, it parks by itself so this is possible or uh, it drives already by itself but it's not fully autonomous yet so we are on to it and uh, there are certain um, predictions when it happens. I will not tell you any number because this is uh, still open, but to get the idea where such uh, sensors are required. Let me tell you a bit uh, more in detail about our motivation here and why we picked this up um, in, especially in the autonomous sensor. Uh, a lowered weight, a lowered power consumption is a strong need. Because uh, when you talk to, or when when you when you want to establish there something, there are immediately 
two questions uh, that arise when you want to bring something new into the car. The one is how, what's the weight of the thing and uh, what power it consumes. The second would be then, of course, of course, the costs, but the, the, the weight and the power consumption are the two most important um, feed, um, most important characteristics that such a thing should consist, as, and especially with uh, also considering also uh, improved performance and reliability. This is also, of course, important, but as I said, the most important is a reduction in weight and the reduction in power consumption. As I said, think of the big bulky lighter sensor on top of the car. Uh, this is nothing that's feasible for, um, for mass production. From an industrial also to say what we want to push is to improve the miniaturization level because this comes in hand with the reduction of power and reduction of weight to get the sensor devices, the sensor packages smaller. For this, we set the goal uh, of our Tinker project uh, to by two of main or two main goals. On the one hand, we want to establish a fabrication chain, a pilot platform. Uh, that addresses this uh, in this uh, this market need uh, to improve um, our fabrication processes to that way to that level that we indeed address this uh, these issues here. And this we do by a dedicated uh, pick and play up uh, developing pick and place assembly techniques to improve on the one hand speed, accuracy, and reliability but also uh, introduce additive manufacturing as fabrication technique to further miniaturize uh, sensor packages to allow uh, further miniaturization. And of course, linked to that uh, is to improve the reliability at the automation level and also to lower rejection rates. And this uh, we, uh, we try to establish via dedicated feedback control. This means that the when something went wrong during the fabrication, that it's not rejected by the fabrication, uh, so it's uh, it affects the yield. But we indeed aim for a 100% yield fabrication. That there we have self repair mechanisms inside this uh, pilot platform. And the second big objective here is the manufacturing of the radar of radar and lidar sensor packages, which plays the most important role in self driving cars. Here I want to give you an overview of what I already talked about uh, to give you also uh, some pictures to it. Uh, as said, uh, the pilot platform consists of an assembly part, an additive manufacturing part based on inkjet printing, also now in print photography, and they are linked together, they are glued together. The, something that holds it together is this feedback control consists of inspection and compensation. So the idea is that we feed in into this platform our uh, sensor bear dies that are processed, uh, build, so structures are built on of uh, and so on, and we end up with sensor packages uh, for rather and lighter applications in the automotive sector. Some project facts, uh, because this is uh, what I forgot until now. I said uh, the project started last year in October. It's a three years EC funded project out of the Horizon 2020 program. Here you see the consortium, the partner logos. Uh, so if you need to sum it up somehow, we are, we are 10 key industrial partners ranging from automotive sector um, to material supply and process developments, uh, rounded up by three research institutions and two consultants in service associations. You find us online at our website, which launched uh, actually last week, so quite fresh, but also in the LinkedIn uh, webpage we have and on Twitter. Since the conference topic is printed electronics, I want to give you now a, big, a little bit of overview how we in the project handle this topic about printed electronics and thinking about sensor packages. Uh, it's more or less all about electronics but not just. So uh, I want just to give you a small uh, insight what we are dealing with. 
first of all, we have some material development topics, printer development topics, obviously with the pilot line aspect there. And uh, linked to that is a process development that consists, of course, pre, post, and actual processing there. Uh, the applications where we use it uh, are various. I just picked uh, three out of, uh, of the many. Uh, one is uh, a direct integration of sensors, so the bare dies assisted by inkjet printing. On the one hand, on the other hand, a multi-layer PCB fabrication uh, on the fly, so to say, in the, in the line, so that you feed not just also in uh, PCBs, but also to try to print it inside uh, the pilot line, and obviously also a dedicated post-processing. Here just some examples to that, uh, how you can imagine uh, Oh, uh, how the how this could look like. Uh, I borrowed some pictures I found online, to be honest. Uh, with talking about materials, uh, we have also PV NanoCell to today with us. So uh, if you're interested, we can also talk in the uh, in the network sessions a little. Um, but PV NanoCell is one of the partners in in Tinker. And their, their main responsibility is on developing the electrically conductive materials. I just borrowed here a slide uh, that uh, gives you an overview what the um, what the key know-how of PV NanoCell is and what's uh, what is used in in Tinker. And uh, PV NanoCell, uh, uh, based on their Single crystal approach uh, developed or is developing uh, the metal-based inks that are then processed. Uh, why is a new uh, new development required? Because they already have quite a large portfolio. But uh, thinking about going to resolution reliability and of course with additive manufacturing, quite in general, uh, it always comes in hand with material development. So you it's quite often that you not just can uh, pick something from the shelf and print it uh, for your for your application. You need to also consist, uh, consider material development to the special needs. And thinking about rather and lighter sensors, you have other requirements uh, like it needs to withstand a strong humidity, the uh, strong temperature changes, and so on. So in automotive sector, you have uh, stronger or more critical uh, environmental requirements that uh, the material needs to fulfill, that it works under these conditions. So a dedicated material development is mandatory here. Printer uh, is uh, the second part of where we focus here, uh, where Notion systems, uh, which should also be uh, in the today's call, in the today's uh, conference, um, they will set up uh, one piece of the pilot line uh, that's dedicated to inkjet printing that fulfill the goals of the interoperability so uh, that the machine can be thought of one machine, but it, con uh, but it consists or it's a system of systems. So there you have this keyword interoperability. And trust me, when you uh, try to uh, pronounce it three times in a row, you end up with uh, with a knot in your tongue. So it's a little bit tricky to pronounce it. Um, but of course, it should consist the pre uh, print, the pre processing, printing processing, and post processing all within the line, and rounded up, of course, with the inline inspection. Uh, on collaborating with Notion, so dedicated partners uh, uh, do their R&D work together with Notion. We will establish here the dedicated printer and the dedicated process to round it up completely. Uh, the processing itself, as uh, already teased before, we have a pre-processing uh, to improve the adhesion of the material, here we can uh, play a little, uh, not just by the material, but also in the process itself. The printing itself, here one example of, of a printed electronics board uh, um, from, from ourselves or from ProFactor. Uh, here we focus on the multi-material printing, basically of printing electrically conductive together with dielectric material, together with other materials I didn't mention so far, which are also part of the project. 
uh, and of course do a dedicated post processing. So an inline curing and also especially an inline sintering. Otherwise we cannot be, uh, uh, cannot improve, for example, of fabrication times and so on if we need to do it outside. Uh, and of course, when thinking of printing a PCB, uh, you need to be uh, to, to do this uh, on the fly, otherwise uh, you cannot compete. Let's come relatively now to an end. So I want to give you also an outlook of what will happen this year, next year, and a project. And just a rough overview uh, without going too much into details. So this year we are we aim to set up the pilot line already with the supporting tools and obviously also do process and material development there. In 22, we start to fabricate uh, the prototypes already on the pilot line. And in 23, you see the demonstration and validation. So please stay tuned. As I said, follow us on the on our online presence. If you need uh, if you want to contact us, you can either way can't directly contact me or my colleague from company Amires, who acts as a dissemination and expectation manager. With this, thank you for your attention and see you at the virtual network break. <laughs>